What a nice day today in La Lombardia. What is this doing here? Amadeo, what are you doing here? You need to take your bath. But Nona, look what I found. I'll swing the pendulum. Oh, look how it swings. Pull the string and swing it again. See what happens. Whatever you say, mia Nona. Do you see it takes longer for it to swing to the right than to the left to then come back? This movement is called harmonic motion. The amount of seconds it takes to move left, right, then back is called a period. How much the harmonic motion occurs within one second is called a frequency, which is measured by the unit hertz. If the frequency decreased because the pendulum got longer, I wonder what will happen if I climb on it. Little fool! More weight doesn't affect pendulum's harmonic motion. Ouch. But it does affect the harmonic motion of the springs inside the clock. When we hang something on a string, gravity is a force that pulls it down and stretches the string. It increases the mass, and we, we use our equation to get a greater force. I see. See, it's late, and you still need to take your bath. But Nona, how does that sound get to your, our ear? There's a speaker inside this clock that pushes against the air particles in front of it. This makes a high pressure zone. The speaker then stops pushing and the particles have more space, which makes a low pressure zone. The speaker keeps doing this. The air particles don't move, but the energy they have move on to the next particles. A pattern of high and low pressure zones travel and our ears pick it up and interpret it as noise. This is another way to think of sound. No, no, I have an idea. What is it, my dear? I was thinking that the motion of both pendulum and sound are sort of like the waves in the beautiful blue sea. What, what? What are you saying, boy? Well, I guess you're right. Think about it this way. Look at the clock's pendulum again. Let's swing it again and measure the vertical position of the weight at the bottom in comparison to time. If we graph it, time will be on the x-axis and the vertical position of the weight will be on the y-axis. The movement to and fro equilibrium creates a wave that we can measure to find equilibrium, the amplitude and intensity of the wave, the wavelength, and the frequency. All we need now is a ruler. Now, this is a tool that can help us understand sound, motion, and energy. Let me give you another example. Let's say we shorten the pendulum, swing it, and measure it. If you look, the waves seem different. We begin measuring and notice that the wavelength has decreased and that the frequency has increased. We do some quick calculations measuring the wavelength, also known as lambda, the velocity and time of the wave, and get to the equation wavelength equals velocity over frequency. This equation allows us to predict the behavior of waves anywhere, anytime. Wow, well, Nona, that's incredible, even real waves. Yes, my dear, I want you to imagine the oceano and all its beauty. There are also earthquakes under the sea, and when this happens, a great amount of energy is released into the sea. The energy moves the water above the earthquake upwards. Let's say the water above the earthquake only rises 5 feet or 1.524 meters. And we can also say the water above weighs 5 tons or 4.5 million kilograms. We use the equation force equals mass times gravity and get that 6,894,604,480 newtons are needed to lift all this water. A little movement requires a lot of energy. Let's look at what happens after. Gravity pulls the water back down and the energy moves to the side. The horizontal motion creates a traditional wave. This is not how a majority of waves are caused. This is known as a tsunami or a tidal wave. Regular waves occur solely in the surface caused by wind. These so-called tidal waves move entire columns of water. Now let's see how one of these waves can grow up to a massive size. We'll, we'll say that the ocean is 2,000 feet deep and that the wave is 2 feet tall when it starts. The wave will continue moving through the ocean 
until it reaches shallow water where it will grow exponentially. The same amount of energy now moves less mass, so the height of the wave is now higher. But remember, the water itself doesn't move, it's the energy that moves through the medium, just like sound waves through the air. We can look at this wave just like any other wave. As the wave reaches the shallow water, wavelength decreases, frequency increases only a small bit because wave speed decreases due to increased friction from the shallow water. The only thing that really increases is the wave's amplitude. Thank you, grandmother. You are an amazing teacher. Mwah. Good. Now let's go and get something to eat. All right, all right. This world of physics is wonderful.